In the weeks since his mother had passed on, Leonard had noticed a distinct shrinking of his own personal universe. His evenings were less occupied, his social options had become more limited, and his mind seemed diverted inwards towards a vague, dreamy melancholy. As Hungry Paul got up to boil the kettle again and rinse the mugs, Leonard broached the subject. Maybe it's not just the universe that expands and contracts, he said. Perhaps the same applies to us, you know? That as we get older, our lives start shrinking. How do you mean? The thing is, as a child, the world looked huge, intimidatingly so. School looked big, adults looked big, the future looked big. But I am starting to feel that over time I have retreated into a small world. I see people rushing around and I wonder where they're going to. Who are they meeting? Their lives are so full and I've been trying to remember if my life was ever like that. Hungry Paul paused a moment. I think I know what you mean. But for me, the bigness of life was always the problem. I have spent over three decades hacking a safe path through the wilderness, as of you to some extent. The path may be a little narrow in places, but is it really so bad? It's not just external circumstances, answered Leonard. I feel myself getting smaller. I feel quieter and more, I don't know, invisible. There is this palpable sense of physics that my life is being pulled inwards. One thing has led to another and now I feel that if I don't do something, I'll just carry on some minor harmless existence. There is a lot to be said for that. As you know, I have always been modestly hypocritic in my instincts. I wish to do no harm. My preference has always been to stand back from the world. Much like the Green Cross Code, I like to stop, look and listen before getting involved in things. It has stood me well and kept me on peaceful terms with my fellow man. It's certainly better than trying to make my mark on the world only to end up defacing it, said Hungry Paul. I'm not about to start chaining myself to railings or throwing bras at policemen, if that's what you mean. There's no shortage of people willing to take that path, but I just can't help feeling that I need to open the doors and windows of my life a little. Hungry Paul hesitated holding his biscuit over his tea just a fraction too long and despairing as a half-moon of digestive sank to the bottom of his mug. That may be so, he said. But the trick is to know how much of the world to let in without becoming overwhelmed. The universe, as Edwin Hubble taught us, is a hostile place. Indeed. And sometimes it's difficult to know whether you want to scream or block out a scream, said Leonard. It was hard to say whether it was the Yahtzee talking, but both men had found themselves in one of those flowering conversations where one thought opens another. Perhaps they could have discussed the subject all evening, if only it had been hypothetical. Things being otherwise... The natural pause in the conversation gave them a moment to check themselves. Even among close friends, there are still some thoughts that ought to be allowed to ripen in private. 
They finished their tea and reached an unspoken decision that, after a pleasant evening's play, and with both their scorecards looking a mess, they would call it a night. Leonard popped his head into the sitting room to say goodbye. Helen had finished the jigsaw, Monet's Lilies, a painting Leonard had written about in the world of art encyclopedia, and was on the phone to Hungry Paul's sister Grace discussing wedding DJs. Peter, with saintly patience, had the TV on pause again and said goodbye with a thumbs up. Hungry Paul saw Leonard off at the door. Good night, then, said Leonard. Good night, Leonard, said Hungry Paul, closing his judo bathrobe at the throat to keep his chest from getting a chill. Without thinking, they both looked up at the inky universe they had both been talking about. As the torch light moon shone down on the snails crisscrossing the driveway, Leonard stepped over them and made his way home, carrying with him the things he had said over the course of the evening. Things he hardly knew he knew. Thank you.